Hello and welcome, I'm Tafara Gadamu. Women of excellence have continued to be recognized and held. One of the institutions that's doing so is the Association of Women in Business. This year it had seven finalists and I'm joined by three for this edition on Meet EBC. Dr. Leah Tadese, Bogalich Gebre, uh, Fralim um, Shiva Bhav, and uh, Sabla Hailwe. Very warm welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. You, you, you were the finalist for this year's uh, AWIP Awards and on X number of achievements, right? I mean, I see quite a mix here. I've been following your story for the last 15 years. You are where you are now uh, because you've tried to address some of the challenges Ethiopian women, girls to be more precise, face. I'm talking about traditions, uh, cultural stuff, and and. And of course, uh, at the end of the, the day, it's the economy, right? Yes. You are known, pretty much known for trying to address FGM in southern Ethiopia. Yes. But that's not about it, is it? No. It's one of the violation uh, against women. But that's not about it. Our work is really to help women to recognize her personhood as a human being, participate in every endeavor of society, whether political, economic, social, whatever. But most important is for her to free that she is. She is a being. And uh, to start really to bring that concept of sense of being and self to women who have accepted her position as a given, as natural, to be cut alive, to be snatched and abducted as animal, to be bitten, maimed. She has accepted as if it is her lot here we are coming saying, no, no, no. You are equal like anybody else, like man, as a human being. You have the right to refuse, to accept, to choose. You have personhood. And that's the place to break in with women themselves. But you're talking about rural women in Kambata. We um, are talking about rural women. But it's very difficult to reach out to them, isn't it? You'll be surprised very much because my assumption is I, I am a rural woman. I was a rural woman. But the difference between them and I, I was given a chance to be literate. It's not easy to penetrate, to break through to a society. But the human sense is the same everywhere in the world. In other words, all of us want something good. Every parent wants something good for their children. If I could only bring that knowledge to them in a proper manner, without judging, without condemning, and make them discuss, <coughs> understand. And that's what you're trying <coughs> to do at the Millennium College, right, at the St. Paul Hospital. I mean, you give this chance yes. to people from not only from from the cities and so on, but from from rural Ethiopia uh, that Rogalich uh, was talking about, right? Exactly. That's one of our um, <coughs> core values and uh, missions in the in the college, where what we see that these regions, in uh, especially in the emerging regions, where uh, healthcare is really uh, a big problem and. Uh, in indigenous uh, indigenous uh, people from those regions are not yet empowered to have uh, those uh, those opportunities to get uh, uh, to be the doctors and go back serve their community so that was one of the uh, missions of the college that we give opportunity to those because if opportunity is given then they can make it and they can make it and they can serve their community much much better than people who are uh, coming from other communities who would be kind of very temporarily uh, serving and going away. So 30% uh, of uh, the college gives this uh, um, opportunity to those four regions. And also for women, we try, uh, well, the, the, the hope is even to go uh, up to 50%, but 
at least currently we are at 38 percent of uh, female medical students from all over not only for those regions but from all over which is uh, one of our uh, so you focus key. on on women yes. and and and, yes. and so on uh, they're you know just providing uh, a chance they don't deserve they do deserve no, they right do deserve definitely they do mm -hmm. deserve and it's competitive too so it's a uh, competitive uh, for all of the uh, entrances and they take their exams and we enroll them but we give them uh, the the, uh, the chance and the opportunity to get even if, if it was through the general uh, placement of the Minister of Education, they might, they might not get this opportunity. And we have seen them uh, becoming, uh, well, some of them may, 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 it may be challenging for some of them where we give support, but we have seen them being uh, uh, very great doctors and uh, making even some, some of the graduates are already making a difference going back to their communities. It all started with this kid who had nothing to eat yes. uh, in Bahardar and uh, your school, f f that's where your f uh, school meal program started, right? Yes, um, yes, that has been the question that I've been asking. Um, I am a strong advocate of schools and um, I study a lot about what kind of schools should we have in Ethiopia. Uh, all that my sister said, it all starts when they're children. So h how we see children, how we treat them, how we raise them, how we train them uh, matters a lot. Uh, the view uh, toward the view uh, on women, like the attitude towards women from society, the attitudes toward women f about themselves. So it's really a, a complex issue. So, but it all starts when they are children. So I have been saying we really need to focus on children. Uh, whatever problems we have, we have uh, multiples of problems, social problems, and then that causes economical problems. That causes one after the other. So. Uh, I have been but you were specifically interested in malnutrition or malnutrition. kids who don't have yes. the, yeah. Yes, we cannot talk about quality education, quality training when the children are starving. First thing comes first. Food is, is, is not an option. It's a necessity for survival, uh, not just for su survival, but for better performance in the schools. In fact, we've seen that uh, school meal programs can actually uh, retain girls to stay in school uh, so that they don't have to be gone for early marriage. Uh, families do that to reduce family size, so we have seen that. And we have uh, established the Ethiopia School Meal Initiative, uh, the organization that's uh, working on creating a sustainable school meal program in Ethiopian public schools. We have already presented the concept note for the Ethiopian government, which was well received, and we're currently designing the strategy. Uh, nutrition has a big, big role to play. It has, but how did it all start in your school in, uh, out there in Bahadar? It's interesting. I, I have a school that I established in Bahadar. It's called Bahadar Academy. I ran the school for 10 years, and I was working there uh, every day. Um, I was driving from work to my house one evening, and there was this little kid that asked me to stop the car. So I said, I have to stop the car. And I asked him, uh, yes, can I help you? And he, he said, the first thing he said was, I'm not in school yet, but I'm five. And I was like, really? I wonder why. And he said, my mom said she cannot put me to school. Would you please put me to school? And I want to be in your school. And I said, OK, I think I have to do this for you. Otherwise, there is no use that I live here and I, I can't do this for you. This, is, this does not make any sense. So come on to the school tomorrow morning. And he came uh, the next day with his mom. And we talked, and we put him in school. And he scored the highest grade uh, that wow. year from the kindergarten level. He was only five. He, he is a very, very bright, focused kid who put himself to school. So I told everyone about his story, and everybody welcomed him. He was a very happy kid. And then uh, when he reached third grade, he started to drop, and he started to become very isolated, and he was not playing. And the teacher was concerned. Uh, she, she kind of suspected that he was not, uh, something was wrong. And then uh, she checked his lunchbox one time uh, when he was leaving early while the kids were eating lunch. And his lunchbox was empty. And she didn't report it the first day. She said, maybe he ate it on the way to school. And I have to check again. And then she checked the next morning while the kids were going for morning assembly. And his lunchbox was empty. And then she reported to the school. And then the day I heard that report, it just broke my heart. And I said, this is a system problem. 
we have to think that can easily be fixed yes mm. yes I, and and we say this is probably not a one child story this is probably a story everywhere and maybe millions of kids are suffering like this and a kid who put himself to school a courageous kid like that a focused kid who really wanted to educate himself we have to be on his side and we have to have a system that will rescue kids like him if this system is not good for him it won't be good for anyone so that was the day we started uh, thinking about what is it that we can do and uh, the Ethiopia School Meal Initiative was born out of that. Sable, uh, as the director of AWIB, uh, Association of Women in Business in, this, in, in, in Ethiopia, when you hear these kinds of stories, what comes to mind? Because you had tuned into at least seven different stories when you had this finalist mm -hmm. last Sunday. What comes to my mind is these are women that need to be put up front to be seen. These women need to be to be seen by others, they need to, to shine. Because so many of us l need to learn from their experiences, how they tackle problems, how they see themselves, how they um, address issues, how they change problems into opportunities and make the most out of it, how they use themselves as part of a solution, not just as part of the problem, but as part of the solution, and how they allow others and you know uh, coordinate others to solve problems so these are focused women that need to be seen that need to be celebrated so for Arab uh, as the president of Arab I always want to um, encourage women leaders so these are leaders that the young generation can emulate from their lives from their uh, strategies of uh, doing things so uh, this these are women that need to shine and to be celebrated. Right. You, you, you brought, you enrolled uh, girls uh, from the peripheries, and you tell me that you've succeeded in doing so, so much so that uh, uh, a number of those medical, who become medical doctors, went back to their regions, are making a difference at the local level, right? But, but then I understand there is also, the dropout rate is not, is not low, is it? Because that's, I think, a challenge that you face. And what are you doing about that? That's because this, we're talking about women who never had the opportunity. You're talking about girls that you want to support, give the chance, uh, not only to make a difference, but to, in the first place, survive. Mm. As Definitely. Yeah, they have passed through a lot to, to, to reach here. So uh, we see some of them really struggle after even coming to, uh, to the college, after getting the opportunity. But our institution is really committed to uh, uh, see them succeed and we know that they have the potential if they are supported well so the co uh, the college has these different programs especially one of the uh, program that we have is a mentorship program where each uh, academic faculty is given few students to mentor and closely follow and support in the different aspects not only academics any social and other uh, issues that they have they closely uh, mentor those uh, students and we're also trying to have a separate pro uh, I mean, academic support programs for all these uh, students also. And we also integrate actually in, the, in, the, in our uh, education in uh, some leadership uh, trainings where we try to uh, uh, take, uh, take, um, take out their potential and see themselves and uh, so that they can, they can feel that they are able and know that they are able and they can make a difference. So it's are also integrated into the system and uh, even the, the culture, the, the, the medical school culture is also a very, it's not like a hierarchical and, uh, 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 system where the, the students are very far from the, from the <coughs> teachers, but we try to create this learning environment which is student-centered where they feel that they are important and they are the center of the whole, the whole academia. Uh, so that so you basically bridge the gap. Is that what you're telling me? Be exactly. Because it's yes. always been a, a one-way traffic. Exactly. So we are trying to break this culture and uh, a new. So you can hear such testimonies from our students where they say this is that they are really uh, feel that they they are grateful to have to be in this kind of environment uh, where they have the uh, support of the instructors, mm -hmm. not like the autocratic kind of uh, uh, system, which which definitely helps more uh, uh, learning, which helps learning and uh, we see them becoming more competent and role modeling. Uh, so that's, it's really important because in any education, 
uh, the, you may learn the knowledge and the, sk the skill from the, from your instructors, but it's the role modeling that brings the attitude, the compassion that when you go out and give the care that you, that that's what we saw. So that has. Uh, that's the culture we're trying to build. Speaking of role models, uh, have you nurtured a bunch of women to do what you've done and still doing in the last uh, for, for for what a decade or two? The whole program is about that, enabling others. Whether it be it uh, um, uh, elimination of harmful customary practices, it's about leadership. It's about being. It's about doing for others, living outside of yourself. Just to tell you simply, uh, there were about 25 women we have uh, be, been training on gender issues and self-help. Um, they started raising their own funds. Actually, we, we took them because they are doing already something. They started with 25 cents from 25 cents for one bill per month, five bill to per month. Guess what? They established their own organization. They are 500 members. They lend out money. They organized the union of the zone. Out of the nine members of the union, the first seven are women, including the chairperson. That is self-realization, self-actualization. As you know, you cannot change a woman's lot unless you change the community or society itself. So what the way we do is really multifaceted, multi-thrust. The old, the young, teachers, educated, non-educated, elders, government officials, judges, juries. So everybody comes together. One thing we have uh, really, uh, that we as an organization are proud is, we develop tools of development and share to others. I'm sure you know about community conversations. The idea is African. Basically what it is, from millennium years before time of memory, our elders sit under the tree and discuss issues of common concern. It is their planning and, and governance system and conflict resolution. It's all of that what they knew. What we have done is built on that, basically. If it, uh, uh, at the beginning, it was to really to help us to prevent and control HIV AIDS. Or use traditional tools to address traditional Yes, that was problems. Uh, yes, it's not, it's not just traditional pro problems, but including modern governance. Yeah. So, Community conversation, in essence, is people coming together, sitting down, discussing their concern in a facilitated atmosphere where everybody is given equal opportunity to say their view. But what's new about that? It's been, no. it's been there for, for no. ages. The new aspect is women would never have been there. Mm. The young would have been there, uneducated or non-respected of the community would have up, never been there. The marginalized would never been there. What consists community is represented there in our community conversation. And everybody is empowered in there. Mm -hmm. And the women start, you know, really, I don't know how to put it, but coming out from in shell, mm -hmm. literally from shell. The first time their voice cracks, it's amazing and they start getting that space and voice and recognition. Ah, what I say, it matters. I have something that others will hear. And now about leadership, women in leadership, something really I also learned the other day when testimonies were given about Dr. Leah. You know what she brought to, to academia, to medical uh, um, uh, care? The same thing, what she does with her family at home with her three children to the center. A destitute hospital, which only the last place you go because you don't have any money, Kudus Paulus. Today, she has made it a state of art, not only college, but where people go to get care, 
because she brought passion. It's same thing in Bahadur. Am I right that you've brought together entrepreneurs of, yes. of, of your variety, yes. a number of women, and you know, created the entrepreneurial space Spirit. Yes, the Amahara Women Entrepreneurs Association that I was uh, co-founder of, and I was also president for four years. Um, it's it's a very very functional and active association now, and uh, I learned a lot of things when I was working there. Really, a lot of things. Now, in <clears throat> all sub-Saharan Africa, uh, around 80% of the food is produced by women, prepared by women, but still we have not figured out how to deal with food and we have not figured out how to deal with children. While I was working with women, they, <clears throat> they got a, a business opportunity and a huge university to supply food uh, to the university. And there were 40 of them. And the work itself was overwhelming. They were overwhelmed. We, were, we had to help them. We had to request help. But then something happened unexpected. The husbands came to my office and they said, mm -hmm. what is the purpose of your association? Our houses are to, about to break into pieces. Unless you stop our wives from doing this business, you are in trouble. So I was frightened myself, and I had to go and talk to my husband myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked him, we need some help, because we're just working with women, but we, we have neglected the husbands, and now look what happened. So we had to really negotiate with the husbands and talk to them and understand where they're coming from. And two things they mentioned when they complained food and children. We don't know how to take care of our children. Our children are left outside. We're starving. Our kids are starving. We're talking about food and children. So I developed a concept note saying, what is it with food and children? Food and children are women's responsibility. So we have to think deeper, saying, what can we do about this? Can we say the solution about food and children is on a woman's hand because they know what to do? with these two giant problems. So that was my point. I was just circling this idea, trying to come up with something, food and children. What, what can we do about it? Then I said the Ethiopia School Meal Initiative actually is going to target the women of Ethiopia to make sure that every child that enters the school will receive at least one meal a day, wherever they are. So this is a call for the women of Ethiopia, a call for the, for the girls of Ethiopia to say, we can use our skills. It's a skill, mm -hmm. but it's unpaid labor. Yeah, and now we will, you're right. Unrecognized. Mm -hmm. Unrecognized, yes. Doesn't have a value. Mm -hmm. you sh because of her leadership, she brought that importance that the men in the household cannot survive, the children cannot survive without mm -hmm. the wife. But what you should also add, she is not uh, something abstract. She is as human being as she is. She gets tired. She gets frustrated if you don't help her. For child and husband, the family to be fed, it takes all of us. Yes, she has a skill because it is you know, imposed on her. She's not selling that skill, but he's selling his skill outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has to share her lot. Yeah, after that, I strongly advocate for school kitchens for that purpose. Uh, when I talked to the husbands, I realized how insecure they have become mm -hmm. and how destructive that can be for the life of the women. So we started an experimental school kitchen in Bahadar Academy and bringing boys into the kitchen saying, how many times a week do you go to the kitchen? And we found out around 83% of the boys were not allowed in their own home kitchen in this modern day. This is really not about gender roles, so who should do what. This is about living yeah. together, mm. caring for one another, sharing responsibilities. It doesn't really matter who does what. It's about loving one another. So we said we, we have to do something. And then the Amhara Women Entrepreneurs Association, we started after a year, we found a resource for these 40 husbands. A fatherhood class was conducted for them. And they were willing to take that, how to give a bath to their children, how to pack lunch for their children. And it was fun. It was simple. It was a joy for them to take that class. And the uh, association is working to expand that program into possibly on a larger scale. What's your conclusion? I mean, when you had all these seven remarkable women for that uh, final on Sunday. Yes, passion is one. Uh, you need to have uh, something to live for. Uh, but it goes beyond that. 
um, it's something that they, these women, for me, these women are selfless. They go, they think beyond themselves. They are. They care. They have this attitude of generosity. Uh, life worth lived is when it's shared with others. Um, my brother's problem is my problem, and I am responsible to fix it. That kind of attitude and mentality, that kind of mindset. Uh, is necessary for, for people to go beyond uh, their circumstances. So uh, they think it's not just money that makes life beautiful. It's when others uh, others' needs are met that their, their, their purpose for living is accomplished. So for them, I see uh, one thing that, that, that I see in common, they're committed to make life better for others. It's not just for their family or for themselves. But so they go beyond themselves. They transcend. So um, I call them excellent because they strive to do better. They strive always. It's not just a one-time activity. It is a lifetime principle that they go beyond themselves. So uh, they take responsibility. They take responsibility to uproot social problems, systemic problems, structural problems deeply rooted problems. So it cannot come just by doing one thing, but by mm. in making sure that others also participate, not, not, not only themselves, but they are, these are community mobilizers. You know, they make sure that their organization, their family members, you know, their communities, the, all the government structure collaborate. So these are excellent women for me. I've enjoyed the conversation. Thank you very much. And I wish you good luck in whatever you're doing and you have excelled in all of them. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for having us.